Okay, hey everybody, welcome to another episode of On The Rhythm Off The Cuff. Today we have an awesome watch to review for you guys from a channel favorite, the brand Notice. A little bit about them, they were founded back in 2016 out of Long Beach in LA County of California, here in the US of A. Now, a little bit about that, some background on the name. Notice is actually Latin for node, which is basically the intersection of two paths, and uh, their idea is, of course, where quality meets affordability. So really finding that sweet spot between, let's say, heritage and modernity. Uh, also, design meets function. So there's a lot of ways you can kind of read the no into the notice name. But generally, they're just trying to find that sweet spot. And I think, guys, they really have found a niche where they're absolutely dominating and really, really killing it. Um, Essentially, they're a modern micro brand startup, you know, offering high quality, high value wristwatches. Now, this particular type of watch can be, I mean, for me, I would categorize it as an everyday watch because it could really be worn every day. But with some key common characteristics and design language, when you're looking for an everyday watch, of course, you're going to want that versatile blend of sporty and dressy attributes, which I think this watch actually does have, although it is meant to be, you know, full on sports watch. Some of the really high quality finishing choices just dress it up in a way that I think um, set it apart from most of its counterparts when you're looking at just micro brand divers that are out there. Uh, I'd say in this same uh, space, as far as pricing wise, you know, at around 700 bucks, everything is really going for a hardcore tool aesthetic, which here you're going to actually see some refinement that push the boundaries and really make this a watch that I could almost qualify as, as dare I say, luxury. Um, so let's go ahead, get this piece in hand and take a closer All look. All right. So here we have today, guys, we do have the Notice Chasm Black Duality. Now it comes in essentially two colors. There's the black option um, and then there's the white dial. And this is the black dial option. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, basically, the the behind the duality name, um, you know, basically they want this thing built for both the thinker and the doer. Uh, of course, the duality uh, channels the duality, the dualistic <laughs> nature of life. Uh, basically, all things come in, all good things come in twos, um, and the duality is no exception. We got two crowns, uh, two color options, two bezel options. So this is the 60 minute uh, diver option, but you also can get the 12 hour uh, traveler uh, bezel option as well. Um, and basically this thing can fill a multiple of needs. Now you can wear it as a traveling watch, sports watch. I think it even dresses up pretty well, you know, not as like a hardcore dress watch, but I think the minimalist aesthetic here is very, very clean. And in, in that same kind of vein of the Longines Legend Diver, uh, another very famous compressor style watch, um, with a little bit of class, it can go a long way when it comes to dressing something up, especially a timepiece. Now, um, some more details. These are designed, assembled, and regulated in the U.S., which for me, being from the U.S., of course, uh, is a bonus. I think that's great. They do come with a two-year, 24-month warranty, which is also wonderful. And again, from the price, you can get these for 700 bucks direct from Notice. Now, as far as the specs go, this thing is really, really beautiful at 40 millimeters with a 13 millimeter thickness and a 48 millimeter lug to lug. So this thing is gonna wear really, really well. Of course, all in 316L stainless steel. It's brushed with some really, really finely polished bevels. And they're everywhere, guys. We're talking bevel on top. We're talking bevel on bottom. We're talking bevel down the links. I mean, they just have really, really stepped their game up. Look at that, just gorgeous. And, and they really focus on those things that, you know, kind of us as watch idiot savants and aficionados really, really key in on. And if you can get those cream crisp, crisp transitions when it comes to, uh, you know, the, the blending of high polished and the beautiful uh, uniform fine brushing there. It's something that says a lot about the manufacturing capability and the tolerances. So that fit and finish is really to another level. I mean, honestly, the highest level I've ever seen on a notice 
um, product. So, I mean, the, the crazy thing is they're just continuously just leaping, um, you know, leaps and bounds uh, in quality. Just to give you guys a quick idea, I have this bad boy here, my personal Contrail 39, the limited blue, and man, I love this thing, but you put it next to it, and although the Contrail does, you know, it makes a case, it's gorgeous, look at that case profile, but when you look at the bracelet, the H-Link bracelet, how much it's already evolved and just improved, here, this was just a very minimalist, you know, it's meant to be very tool-like, very much in the vein, I'd say, of uh, the old 70s H-Link stylings of, uh, of Seiko, but at the same time, uh, that kind of very much tool aesthetic you'd find in a Zen 556, which was one of the inspirations for this watch. Now, um, this guy, of course, just look at that. I mean, I don't really have to tell you too much for you to know that this thing is just a whole nother ball game when it comes to the quality. Uh, another one that it's really comparable to is this beautiful and, and quite iconic at this point, the uh, Blue Alpinist. Now, when I first saw this in pictures, it just felt large. Um, and it's just really in the design, I guess, visually, there's just so much. Um, there's even open space, it's not crowded. So it just feels like a larger, especially with the uh, bezel being inside, inner rotating. But if you look here, guys, at 40 millimeters, this thing wears pretty much bang on to um, you know the Alpinist, which many people report is just that sweet spot at about 39. Um, you know, I think it's reported some places at 38 and some change. I mean, I'm getting more close to 39 and a half for it. But I mean, when you look at those proportions, the dial proportions, the bezel proportions, it, it's pretty close, guys. Um, except, uh, of course, here I have it on this uh, Parnas Jubilee bracelet, uh, which I did a video about, kind of called you know the best bracelet you don't know about for your alpinist um this thing comes with a beautiful bracelet on it out of the box guys and everything and it's it matches it suits it it has the beautiful clasp here just well done i mean the only thing this thing is probably lacking as far as bells and whistles go is it doesn't have a display case back which i think is absolutely fine and it doesn't have some type of quick adjust clasp right but what we do have is a bevy of micro adjust hole options. So for me, honestly, if I had to choose, right, um, if I'm gonna have a quick adjust clasp system or something that works really, really well, um, as in having this many holes in there actually usable, I'll take this uh, every day of the week because there are some quick adjust class systems that just don't give you much adjustment. It checks a box, but it's not functionally as good as what you really need and what you're looking for. So for me, when it comes to fit, I'd much rather have this and take a little bit of time because this is actually not too much time to stick a little guy in there and and and, and get the micro adjust out of it. Um, so, you know, although there are, you know, some really cool quick adjust class options out there, they're not all what they're cracked up to be. And some of them, I mean, for me, in comparison to a bracelet like this, can just kind of feel more like a check in the box. Here, I think we have something that is really when it comes to milled clasps, this is a top clasp. And that's why you're going to see it on quite a few other micro brands being used. Um, but look at that fine bevel there. Again, that just follows through, flows with the theme. Absolutely gorgeous, guys. Now, the crystal, as you can see, and it probably has been standing out, that is kind of the star of the show here, is this beautiful box dome sapphire with this gray AR coating, which does just play with the light there. You can see little hints and hues of bluish purple there, but uh, nothing overpowering. It still keeps the crystal quite clear, and that is a tall order when it comes to high domed crystals, and this thing is gorgeous. It does have the double dome, so it's domed underneath, um, so it does have minimal distortion um, at angle, and then you do, of course, because of the box dome nature, do get some distortion just there on the very most outer edges, but when it comes to kind of the center of the dial it stays quite legible at even the harshest angles now the crown itself there's two guys they're both signed and they're actually both loomed which is great we also have this beautiful knurling here and then we have them a uh, black coated I believe these are a DLC coat um, and they're just you know when it comes to that tactile feeling these just feel absolutely great in hand 
uh, huge fan. I think on paper, the way they read when you see them in pictures, it almost seems like they might be sticking out too much, but I think the black coloring and that contrast really helps everything just flow and bend and blend. And I own, I honestly am not sure if I would even want to make them shorter if I could, but you know, of course, you're gonna wanna have enough crown to screw in, and that is really uh, the most important thing uh, when it comes to water protection. So from that aspect, you know, I, I really can't say that I could even nitpick that. Now, um, as far as the movement goes, it's a Miyota 9015. Great svelte slim movement. Of course, it does have that nice uh, high beat uh, tick there. Nice sweep of eight ticks per second, which, uh, you know, is definitely uh, on par with the Swiss counterparts. Now, as far as the style goes, it's something really, really special, guys. If you take a close look, you'll notice that it actually is a hybrid dial because it has... Uh, elements of a sandwich dial, but also elements of applied indices. So you can see those raised frames around the cutouts of the sandwich uh, portion. So you get a really beautiful pure loom um, that is really flat, of course, because there's actually a loomed disc underneath. And then of course, you're actually gonna get uh, loomed accents all around here on the inner rotating bezel. Um, so it just, it dresses up nicely. It has some really cool dimension, stuff that you just haven't seen before. Very, very creative stuff. So big ups to the team over at Notice. Um, for really taking time and making that flow. I mean, if you look, the way that the, the date is framed at the six there, it just has that same perfect vibe, as you can see with the, uh, the, the indices, the way that they're framed and encased. So really gorgeous. You even do have also an applied logo there, the Notice logo on the dial, which is another very nice touch and a fine touch and really a sign of just uh, you know, a higher level of craftsmanship. Now, when it comes to water resistance, guys, this does not disappoint. It's actually 300 meters of water resistance. So this is this is up there, guys. This isn't just kind of your basic do it all. It takes it to the next level. Uh, you know, for me, 300 meters is the line between you know, kind of just uh, recreational and professional. You, you know, when it comes to Seiko, their professional line are going to be 300 meters versus your average 200 meter diver. Of course. 100 meters with a screw down crown is going to be good enough for 90% of us, but it's nice to know that there's that much built into here, you know, especially with uh, extra crowns, moving parts, case back, you know, everything is basically built like a tank because it can take that extra bit of pressure underwater. So it just shows that, again, so now you have the outer portions which show a higher level of execution, and because of the, of the functional, um, capabilities that you have you're actually getting you know a lot of functionality that shows an under layer uh, essentially that you can't see uh, also again of that kind of overbuilt quality which is really really great the loom on here is going to be uh, super luminova bgw9 you have 20 millimeter lugs here this does taper down on this beautiful chamfered h link to 18 millimeters fully signed mill flip lock clasp uh, if I can work it with these gloves, even with the gloves worked just fine. As you can see, really nice and actually has usable micro adjust. That's one thing you do worry about at times. The holes are there, but because of the way the linking works out, sometimes you don't always uh, have these as functional usable hole options when you're trying to make this fit really, really nice. So this thing's gorgeous, guys. I'm a big fan of it. Let's actually see how this wears on wrist for you. Okay guys, as you can see on my seven and a quarter inch wrist, this thing just wears beautifully. I get a little bit more arm in there for you so you can get an idea of the scale. This thing is not gonna wear too big, it's not gonna wear too small, right in that sweet spot and the freaking clasp and just everything, these, these links, it's just gorgeous guys. And even up close where the lens is gonna add a little bit of distortion and make this seem a little bit oversized, it somehow manages its visual heft really, really well, really tucked and tidy. You have, of course, that top high polished bevel. Then we got the one underneath, which really actually thins the case out. So absolutely gorgeous, guys. Wear super svelte. I mean, again, this thing isn't too tall and too thick, even though it does have uh, 300 meters of water resistance. 
this thing just wears absolutely like a dream. I'm loving the bracelet here. I'm actually kicking myself for not pre-ordering this. So I'm going to have to put some funds away to make sure that I can secure one of these because this thing just rocks on the wrists. Um, I'm actually a little bit torn because when I saw these in person for the first time, I was so blown away by how much smaller they actually look in person, especially the white dial model. Um, I was almost scared that maybe they, I went from thinking they felt a little bit visually more like a 42 to I was a little bit worried when I saw the white dial model because the white dial contrast with the small center disc actually shrunk it down so much to where I was almost worried like that might actually wear too small. So now I'm even torn now on which one would be my personal choice. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Are you a white dial uh, or are you team black dial? So. Anyways, guys, this thing looks absolutely killer on wrist. Let's go ahead and set up some low light transition and some loom shots, but look at the way the light plays on that gorgeous level of brushing, guys. Now, uh, just real quick, the fitment isn't on luxury, luxury level, right? So there's two parts of that. There's fit and finish. Now, the finishing, I think, is really approaching its borderline luxury level of finish. The fitment still feels to me more uh, akin to a watch that's around a thousand bucks. But again, this thing sells for $700. So it definitely has more of a sporty utilitarian, I'd say fit to it. You know, you're not gonna get super ultra tight tolerances. This thing isn't rivaling Rolex or Grand Seiko from that aspect. But I mean, there's a lot of watches in this you know, above this price range, let's say just from their presage line from Seiko, right? That have a really, really nice finish levels, but the fit is the difference between Seiko and Grand Seiko, right? It's not necessarily the finish because you can get really high levels of finish. And I think the Notice team definitely got some extremely high levels of finish on here, guys. Look at that. So let's, yeah, okay, let's jump into some low light transition and loom shots. Oh, okay. Let's go ahead and hit the lights. As you can see, looking absolutely gorgeous. There are actually touches of C3 on there, uh, or green loom. Um, you can see there at the 12 o'clock triangle, and then on those crowns. So absolutely gorgeous. The loom is fantastic. Although, of course, it is a dive watch at heart, especially in this particular spec with the uh, dive time bezel. Um, but, uh, let's go ahead and actually get a look at some low light transition. That's one thing I really love to do for you guys because you're not always going to be in direct sunlight, which is what pretty much the studio lights are going to simulate. Sometimes you're going to be coming in and out of buildings, you know, coming in and out of your vehicle or just in generally not well lit areas. And what the low light transition does is it really highlights one, how some of those colors are gonna render in person. Here, of course, it's a black dial, so you're not gonna get too much more insight from that aspect, but you are gonna get a better idea of some of those satinized textures when it comes to that bezel insert and the dial itself. Another thing you're gonna be able to do is really zero in on the finish level on here because those bright studio lights will wash out a lot of the imperfections, but when you're looking at it through the low light, you're actually getting a great idea of how just how uniform some of that brushing is. So you can see the way that the light's playing on there. You can look at the brushing, very much a fine brush, not a super machiney looking brush, Definitely a bit of a soft brush there. Really, really beautiful. And of course, that is only with the super high contrast uh, with the light transition there. So really, really nice. Get a little bit of soft light on it there. You can see, look at that, just gorgeous. Then we can get some harsh lights on them here a little bit. This is pretty much where a watch will look at its worst when it comes to the case finishing. You can see, of course, a little bit of the cloud from me touching the bezel there on the high polish, but you do also get an idea of how this will look pretty much at its worst under a microscope, guys, with the most harsh amounts of light and contrast on it. This thing is gorgeous and still doing a killer job of looking absolutely great. So let's go ahead, get the main lights back on, let the camera do some color adjustments there. 
and get into some closing thoughts. On the wrist, guys, this thing wears very, very similar to the Seiko Alpinist, but of course it has an absolutely epic factory bracelet and visually appears closer to a 38 due to the kind of dial to bezel ratio that you're going to get there as far as model variants go again you can get it either in a black dial or a white dial option let me know in your comments below what you're thinking could be your favorite um, and then you can either get a 60 minute diver uh, uh, bezel or the 12 hour traveler bezel so Again, let me know what you guys think. I feel like those 12 hour traveler bezels are becoming more and more popular. So is there a little bit of, okay, just clean that off there. Is it is a little bit of dust? I'm gonna even shoot that with some air. Okay. <laughs> so again, let me know what you guys think from that standpoint. Are you thinking, do I, I'm for me, I like the aesthetic and just the balance of that 60 minute dive time bezel, but I do know that the 12 hour bezel is, of course, I shouldn't say is, but can be a much more useful complication. So I'm a little bit torn from that aspect as well. I'm pretty sure they actually sold out of those uh, the quickest. Now, as far as um, comparable models go, I'd say the upcoming 2020 Prospects Alpinist would be the closest thing here because they do offer a black dial on bracelet and it's actually coming in excuse me at a similar price point right so if you're a Seiko fanboy or you know you're a youtuber and you just need to have that piece of little uh, street cred when it comes to a brand name then of course Seiko is going to add a little bit of value from that perspective right from the horological perspective but if you're just looking at straight up specs guys we're talking you know uh, what this watch is um, and what it can do with the capabilities without thinking about things like in-house or lineage or anything like that what you have here is a watch that is objectively better in every way it can go deeper um, it's polished brighter it's brushed finer i mean this thing's an absolute dream of a watch and this is coming from a guy who really likes Seiko and the Seiko Alpinist, right? I'm actually, I, I actually have one pre-ordered uh, that's on the way. Um, so for me, really, if I was to objectively say, hey, which watch is better? I'd say this definitely is. Um, am I, I still going to own the Alpinist? Yeah, just because I'm, I'm a sucker for that watch. And I think it's really reached iconic status since being discontinued um, and then having the little Hodinkee push with the U.S. blue dial and then now being re-released again um, to just a wider audience. And then also it does have an upgraded movement. But it's still not going to be a higher beat movement like this. It's just going to have more of a power reserve. So all interesting comparisons. But this Notice duality is absolutely killer. I love the color play. I just everything about it. There's just not anything to not like you know, and, and there's so much to love. So super impressed with that. Bottom line, this is just another impressive release from a brand that continues to lead the micro market. So when it comes to, hey, what do you want to be like when your brand grows up? Notice is just like a perfect example. Um, you know, I, I just think they're just getting to a level now where they're just such huge trendsetters, great guys, very humble and offer great customer support. Um, that they're just they get my seal of approval guys and uh it's just there aren't a lot of brands out there where i just kind of swear by them but notice is you know very quickly becoming one of them monta i'd say if monta is is the micro brand rolex then notice is the micro brand tutor um not to say that these brands are related in any way but when it comes to kind of that hip young fun just it just checks the boxes. If you know what notice is, same thing, right? If you know what tutor is, you you have respect for them, right? Um, and if you don't know, you want to find out really quickly once you take a look at your buddy's wrist. So with that said, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you like the video, please do it like. If you're not already, please subscribe for more content just like this. Thanks, guys. Mm -hmm.